Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our DFS slate preview for uh, Saturday, October 19th, and in this video, we are going to be focusing on the best DFS plays. Um, we're not going to be doing too much on lineup construction. That's going to be for a separate video, and you know, just kind of an announcement that those videos from here on are going to be for premium subscribers only on true DFS. So uh, you can, uh, if you want to, you know, experience some of those videos, you can uh, sign up uh, for one of the premium packages on truedfs.com. Um, it's just a little bit too, you know, too proprietary and too, you know, I don't know, to, to justify doing them for free. So uh, that's that. Um, but these will continue to, you know, to do for free. Quite honestly, it's, it's, it's really not that difficult. <laughs> and I say that I don't, I don't mean to sound, I don't know, not only it's egotistical, but figuring out who the best plays are in MMA DFS is very, very trivial. You know, it, all the information is right there in front of you. You just have to figure out who is likely to finish their opponent. Also, who is likely to get takedowns if you're not going to finish your opponent and, you know, and, and, and be able to, uh, to analyze whether the chances of those happenings are commensurate with their salaries. And, and it's it, literally all the information is right there in front of you. What makes MMA difficult from a DFS perspective is figuring out, you know, the best way to combine those to get a good combination of upside and, um, low ownership uh, to make sure that your lineups are not duped. You know, you're going to have, especially on a card like this, you're going to have 11 fights, which means very few combinations, which means it's very likely that the winning lineup in those big GPPs are going to be, uh, are going to be heavily duplicated. So you want to avoid those if possible without playing lineups that just have no chance to win. So, uh, that's going to be more for the lineup construction video, which is a little more complex and a little harder, which is why it's going to be for premium members only. And I do encourage you to sign up for TrueDFS at TrueDFS.com um, to get access to that type of stuff. Um, so as I mentioned, this 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 card, as easy as it was, even became easier. So you had Jake Hadley, who was in a, in a pretty close fight with Brady he stands scheduled and and the 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 salaries were priced really nicely um well, nicely very efficiently but then uh, Brady he stand pulled out and when somebody pulls out after the salaries have been released they can't change the salaries of the opponents um so Hadley is he's going to fight and he's going to get a replacement fighter in 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 Cameron Smotherman and Hadley remains a seventy-seven hundred dollar price, and um, well, fortunately or unfortunately, he's now a minus four fifty favorite in the betting markets. So, if this were, you know, if 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 he were repriced, he would be probably ninety three hundred, maybe more. So, fortunately or unfortunately, this is now a theoretical lock. You know, you just you in in low risk contest or more in the analysis of who the good plays are, this is just at the top of the list. I mean, you just you just can't avoid this. He just wins too often at this price. Not to mention the fact that on an eleven fight card, uh, we need to prioritize wins more often than than if it were a fourteen fight card where we'd really have to get greedy and go for huge upside. So Hadley at seventy seven hundred is just kind of a lock. The um, the other thing about this card is that this main event is almost impossible to fade as well because you have Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. He's 8,300 against um, Mikel Perhea uh, at 7,900. And Fluffy Hernandez is is DraftKings gold. Um, he he has pushing in, it pushes a, a really, really big pace and he gets a lot of control time and he gets a lot of takedowns and he gets submissions also. I mean, all of his wins here are extremely high scoring. And he's going to get five rounds to work with as well. So if he wins, he's just going to be optimal. That's just the way it is. 
Um, he's going to be insanely popular. But, I mean, we're talking about who the best plays are. Um, and then his opponent, uh, he's got 100 straight wins, and he's got some – he's got some – decision wins here like against Ponzinibbio and Chaos Williams these are some low scoring wins but he also has some pretty high scoring early KOs the, the point is that if in fact he does win this it's probably because he scored like really well he got like an early knockout I don't think he's going to win a, a close low volume decision so this this main event is almost impossible to fade in my opinion so Um, uh, if you were playing cash, I might even advise that you, that you, uh, stack this, but in GPPs, I still have not really come up with a great reason to stack a, a, a fight in the big GPP. Um, it just, it just doesn't make optimal often enough. And even if it did, some people are playing it. I don't think it helps the, the uniqueness all that much relative to its chances of actually coming in. So nonetheless, so you have, let's just put Fluffy in for now. Uh, for Heya, it's the same. I don't want to say it's the same thing, but you're going to want one of them. And the other really easy one is 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 the Spain versus Austin Lane. And and the reason why it's easy is if when you go through all of these fights, you look at the various inside the distance lines, and you see the Spain inside the distance is minus 400. Um. And not only that, like to Spain round one is is favored. And normally I would say, okay, that's really, really good. It's like excellent. It's awesome. But when you look through all these other fights, nothing else is even remotely close. So it's he's not even competing with other fighters for that type of inside the distance line. Like what else is there? Like what's Kyler Phillips? No. He's like plus 200. I can't even imagine who would be close. Uh, what's Masumoto? Is he close? Is he minus one ten even? No, plus two sixty. I mean, this is this is just kind of insane. So, what about Charles Johnson? Is he like even plus two hundred? Um, no. I mean, what is he? Let's see, plus two hundred five. So, the point is, is that given again his metrics and given again. The context of the slate to Spain is just a lock. Okay. So, so you're starting off with three locks. Now, I don't know if it's Hernandez or Pahe. It really doesn't make a difference. And when I say a lock, I don't mean he's going to win. That's not even the point. The point is, is that his metrics are just way too strong relative to the rest of the field. The chances that he wins and the chances that he scores well is just too. Is just too big relative to the field to ignore. So these three spots are just kind of three squares, at least theoretically. Now, again, the bad news is that if you play this way, you're almost assuredly never coming up with a unique lineup, in the, especially in the big GPPs. And you might not even get lineups that are duped less than 20 times. At the mo at, at the best. So when we talk about lineup construction, we are going to have to figure out which of these we're not playing. But when it comes to figuring out who the best plays are, this is this is the three. Now I already mentioned that that so many of these other fights are just huge underdogs to finish and just to, to rifle through. Right, you're going to get it's just the inside the distance line. Uh, the Melissa Martinez fight, let's just find anybody with even remotely a good inside. This I know plus 400, plus 550. Uh, Jessica Penne, we have plus 400, plus 350. Edwards Vidal, plus 375, plus 550. The, the Matsumomo, uh, Matsumomo, Matsumoto, plus 260, then plus 900. How about I'll. Alma Baev, maybe? Is he even plus 250? He's plus 300, and that's so far one of the best. Maybe this Pineda fight? I bet you maybe this one. Maybe they're plus 200 here. Okay, plus 200, plus 145. This is like the best by a lot of the others. 
Um, we don't even have the Hadley prop yet, but it doesn't matter. We're playing him anyway. Charles Johnson was plus 205. All right, so that's probably the next one. Kyle Phillips, what did I say? Plus 200 inside. That's like the next one. And then the main event we talked about. So there's nothing that's good. So what you what you have to do is one of two things. Number one, go with the best inside the distance lines or and or just just start prioritizing takedowns, you know, just assume that these fights are finishing and just play the fighters that rate to score takedown points and and control time points. And and in addition to that, you you. Yes, you're going to do well when they win, but you could even get there in losses with some of these some of these fighters. You know, when you have 11 fights like this, it, it is, I don't want to say likely, but it's possible that the optimal is going to be a five or six. And if that's the case, then you're going to want a loser that scores decently, which is usually the wrestlers, okay? Because... The, the the way they might lose is get their takedowns, but it not be enough, and they to win, and they score 30, 35, maybe 40, 45 points in losses, which on a card like this could very well be good enough. So that that's who we're going to prioritize in this um in this breakdown. And if you have neither of those things, it's just that you just fall. Um. So who? Well, let's talk about. Two of the fights that we just kind of touched on. So Charles Johnson was one of the better inside the distance lines at plus 200. And this fight, Pineda Elkins was the other one. So if I had to prioritize like who the next guys I would look at, it would be somebody from the, the Elkins Pineda fight and probably Charles Johnson. Cause Charles Johnson is inside the distance line is good. And he also does have a path involving takedowns here. So if, if you were going to then, you know, say, okay, what do I add to these top three as the next group? It would be probably Charles Johnson and one of Pineda Elkins with that plus 200 inside the distance line. I think that makes, that makes the most sense. Okay. And in addition to those, we're just looking for takedowns. And, and so Austin Lane, unfortunately, doesn't win often enough, so he doesn't count. In the in the Ardeline Martinez fight, I, I don't see any takedowns. Well, I shouldn't say that. So Alice Ardeline had a couple of takedowns. So okay. So Ardeline's in play. Elise Reed Penne. Penne is the one with the takedown upside. So she's in play. Nothing from Edwards Vidal. Matsumoto Katona. I guess he had two takedowns. I guess this one isn't bad. Um, so Matsumoto's in play. Katona, I mean, he's got three, four takedowns, so he's he's definitely in play. Of the Almabayev Nikolau fight, uh Almabayev is the one that could go for takedowns, so we're gonna play him, but probably not Nikolau. Uh and then in Kyler Phillips against Vaughn, I think Kyler Phillips has upside from the takedowns. So what I would do in this card is, well, let's look at another way. We know we're playing these three. Then you could just shuffle all the others that I talked about. Like, let's just, and can you get to all of them? Let's see. Let's see if you can get to, say, Kyler Phillips. I think you can because what you're going to get, I mentioned, is you could play something like Katona at 7,200 who could get points and losses, not to mention points and wins. And then you could play Elkin, you could play Ardalane, whatever it is. So Katona is going to make the Kyle Phillips lineups work. Okay. Uh, well, he's going to make all the lineups work. But if you played Penne, then you could do, again, somebody from this Elkins fight. And then you even play Matsumoto, you know, whatever. So you can, you can shuffle the rest of these if you lock in Hadley, Hernandez, and Despain. And you can make some really good three-max lineups, I guess, 
single entry lineups, 20, 20 max. Can you get, can you make good 20 max lineups with those three? I mean, I guess. I don't know how much, how duped they're going to get though, even in single entry and three max. I mean, these are just very popular builds to have those three in there, I imagine. Um, and I hate to say this, but but I get, I think that's it. Let's review. I mean, main event, kind of a lock, one way or the other. Hadley, certainly. I mean, he's a theoretical lock. The Spaniers, his metrics is too strong. So it's these three. And then if you want to shuffle the rest, you got to play some of the guys with, with, with takedown upside. And I already identified who those were. Phillips, Johnson, Almabayev, Pene, Ardeline. Both these guys, Pineda, Elkins are okay. Uh, and Almabayev. And Katona, actually. That's going to do it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do a betting breakdown this week, but we're certainly going to do a line of construction video as we get closer. And uh, that's it. Good luck, everybody.